Why would I send you to? Well, how yeah, does it benefit name. me? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good name. Yeah. Did you go by Yosef now? Yeah. Or, uh, so I, I, Yosef in Hebrew. Yeah. By the part Joseph. Yeah. Is really I mean, the reason we do Dawa, the Muslims, we have this concept of propagation, propagation of faith. The reason we do this is to make sure that we're not the only ones going to paradise because we believe if we die in Islam, yeah. we die believers, we will be in paradise. If we die in faith, we die doing good deeds and we're not, uh, you know, committing evil acts, we will be in paradise. The, the reason we do Dawah, which is like propagating the faith, is to take people with us to paradise, not to hellfire. Yeah. That's why we talk to you. That's why we talk to Christians here. We're not here to spread I hate. Uh, hmm? Yeah, I, I, I would agree, Adnan. I don't think you're here to spread hate. I don't yeah. think you're a hateful person. Yeah, so I, I, and I have nothing but sympathy. Even for the staunchest enemies we have here, I have nothing but sympathy. I think if, if they were in problems, I would do my best to help them. If I could, in my you know, power, I would help them. I like our Prophet did. Yeah. yeah. You know our Prophet, when people were throwing things at him, they were spitting on him, they were insulting him, and he was trying to help them. In fact, he taught his companions. One of the men uh, who insulted, sorry, I, can't, I, I didn't mean no, to hijack your comment. You know, uh, Abu Bakr's daughter, Aisha, was married to the Prophet, and she was uh, wrongfully, falsely accused of something she had never done. And the person who accused her was being supported by Abu Bakr, the father of Aisha. He stopped supporting her because he said, hold on a second, I'm supporting this guy and he's accusing my daughter of wrongdoing. Yeah, no problem, no problem. So what, he, what does he do? He goes to the Prophet, the Prophet hears about it. The Prophet tells him, no, don't stop supporting him, continue supporting him, continue supporting him. And this is, this is the lesson the Prophet is uh, teaching his companions. Even now, this man accused the Prophet's wife and the daughter of Abu Bakr. So what is the Prophet teaching him? Continue supporting him. Don't cut his provisions. Don't cut his food. These are the lessons we learn. And what did he do, Abu Bakr? He doubles the stipend. He doubles it. Not only what he was paying before, he returns evil with kindness. So this is what our Prophet has told us. A lot of people would like people to think otherwise, but we are here for that reason, to clarify that the Muslims, the reason Islam spreads, the way it spreads around the world is because it appeals to people. People, when they go and do their private study into this faith, they come to realize what they hear on Fox News or in the mouth of Boris Johnson and Trump and their likes. Islam is not what they say. It is. Islam is what the Muslims are doing, right? From Morocco to Bangladesh, we have a civilization, we have a people, we have a lot of people. And amazingly, when you, what, what you come to realize is when people go and live with the Muslims, when go, you see people living in the West, most of them have never had any interaction with Muslims. Germans, Austrians, Dutch, Danes, uh, Swedes, even most Brits, they have never lived with the Muslims. Okay, I'm saying most. So, what is the outcome? They watch the news, they see negative propaganda, they think Muslims are just not worth it. Muslims are just not worth it. Okay, there's no debate going on. There's just, uh, I was talking to Joseph, he's gone. So, we're just gonna continue talking. I don't know if he's gonna. So, so, so the point here is, we invite the Westerners to go and live with the Muslims, go and spend a month with the Muslims from Morocco to Bangladesh. You have many choices. You have so many countries. You can go to them. And Muslims have nothing but hospitality. Okay. Uh, people will cite terrorist attacks in the Middle East. Don't quote a war zone to me. Don't bring a war zone to me as an example of coexistence or as an example of lack of harmony. Because a war zone is a war zone. Don't go to a war zone. Go to peaceful countries and you'll see how Muslims will treat you. Okay, Muslims will greet you. They'll take you into their homes. They'll share food with you. And Westerners who don't have this kind of culture, you know, people are so individualistic. They are so lonely in Western countries. They don't have this kind of culture where you bring people, random people into your house and start sharing food with them. You don't see that in Sweden. You don't see that in Germany. If you go and knock someone's door in Germany, one of your neighbors, no, not call police. I mean, that may be an extreme example. Okay, but they will say, oh, what are you doing here? What can I do? How can I help you? It's like, uh, it's like a surprise for them. But in a Muslim land, in Muslim country, if a neighbor knocks your door, okay, it's a source of uh, blessing. 
we the Muslims, we are taught that when a neighbor comes to you, it's a source of blessing. It's not something, uh, something to be scared of, right? So we have this culture. So uh, Western media uh, is taking advantage of Western ignorance. Western masses, they've never... In fact, even during the Middle Ages, during the time, time of the Crusades, okay, one of the Muslim authors, his name was Osama ibn Munqid, and he was an eyewitness of the Crusades. He himself participated in them. He was a knight, and he was a poet, and he was a, um, you know, um, a man of literature. He wrote many books. One of them was titled Kitabul Atabar, a book of lessons. In that book, he states that those crusaders who come from the West and they have not known the Muslims, they're very harsh, very brute, very rude, and very repulsive. But those crusaders who came earlier, they have spent years with Muslims. They have been immersed into our culture. They are more polite. They are more friendly. Yeah, no problem. They are more friendly. Okay. So this shows you an example that anyone who spends time with Muslims, okay, will realize that after all, culturally speaking, these are very nice people. They are very hospitable. They are very kind and compassionate. Right? They will help you if you are in trouble. But that we cannot say about Israel. Now coming back to you. Okay, so Israel. That we cannot say about the Israel. Right, let's, 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 the... If we're going to do Israel, let me set up my camera because I would. We can like ask questions. Question. Yeah, yeah. What, have you ever tried consider doing Dawa in, yeah, okay, in former uh, Eastern Bloc countries? Eastern, Eastern, uh, Eastern European countries. We have considered. Because there's one all There's apart. a lot of racism there. There's a lot of xenophobia, and this racism and xenophobia has. Uh, being translated into Islamophobia now. So those who are racist and xenophobic are now venting their uh, their anger and their frustration on Muslims. Muslims now have become the, the easy target. Muslims are the Jews of the day. Muslims are the Negroes of the day, unfortunately, too. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry to use this term. I'm using it, well, it depends, in an academic it sense. Where you are. Huh? It depends where you are. Po Poland? Poland is a uh, Czech, Czech Republic. Czech I Republic, mean, yes. Yeah, Poland yeah. is more of a problem with um, what's it called with brown Muslims as opposed to white Muslims. Because I know someone who's there who's Turkic from Russia, and she's had a fairly good time. But but there is Islamophobia. Yeah, there. yeah, of course. There is Islamophobia. It's more, linked, it's more linked to ethnicity rather than anything else. Yeah. There's one scholar, I can't remember his name. who yeah. said the biggest missed out opportunity of all time. Yeah. Was the collapse of the Soviet Union. Because, you know, yeah. these people have been raised with... But they, know, they, they wouldn't, Russian intelligence, KGB, wouldn't no, allow the Muslims to just walk in and start doing that if they were having a war in Chechnya. Chechnya, Chechnya was on fire. So, so they, had to, they had to propagate against Islam. They had to do propaganda against Muslims. Even Putin, if you pick up some of his old speeches, he's talking directly against Islamic rituals. Even the concept of circumcision. <laughs> Putin, Putin is actually mocking circumcision something that saves lives amazingly circumcision is directly relevant to saving lives today it saves us from many diseases especially when in this day and age stds are all over the place people are transmitting and contracting sexually yeah and circumcision circumcision protects against STDs yeah, no. okay, of all types, right? And amazingly now, for some reason, it stands as an evidence for Islam. Why would God command uh, men to remove, remove your foreskin? Why? And that's centuries ago. Today, in the Western world, circumcision is not, uh, it's not in fashion. It's not common. Yeah. Very few people do it, right? Um, the Jewish people will do it, the Muslims will do it, Christians don't do it, because Paul came and told them, don't circumcise, just go easy on STDs, right? This is what the consequence is, right? Now, one of the reasons uh, HIV spreads 50% faster in Africa, in particular, is because of circumcision. They're not circumcised. So the African governments are now paying their citizens to circumcise. Okay, Joseph is getting his weapons ready. Yeah.
is getting. These are modern. These are modern weapons. These. This is one of the. You know, this weapon is more dangerous than. I've got three of them pointed at me. I just got one. There is. There is no antagonism here. Three. Three friendly cameras pointing at you. No, this one. We don't know if this one is. We don't know if this one is a friendly one. Yeah. No, I put the full debate up and I put the one minute debate up for the shorts. And okay. I'm sure you understand what a short is. Yeah. So, 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 so the point I'm making is that Muslim people, generally speaking, when you go and live with them, spend time with them, you'll come to realize that these people are not what the Western media and Western politicians and Western prostitutes are telling them. Have you heard of the term prostitute? Prostitute is basically uh, a press person who is hired to spew hatred on uh, Muslims. So we call them prostitutes. Okay, it's, it rings a bell. It's, a, it's very similar to another word. What word uh, is that? Prostitutes. <laughs> what are they? You don't know? Okay, let me teach you some English then. Let me teach you some English then. Today, there will be a lesson on, Eng in, on the English language. He was calling it a weapon though, so maybe it was. <laughs> so, Joseph, you're getting your camera ready. Only, only I'm getting nervous now. And, and facing so directly you know, at me, and I'm thinking, what's going to come my way now? No, you, you mm. said about Israel. I thought we were talking about Israel. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay, wait, okay. Before you get into a big debate, Matt, look, yeah. so you would say even if the foundations of Judaism were proven to be false, you would still be Jewish. So I, yeah, I, ethnically, yes. No, well, ethnically, saying, obviously. I'm saying I don't believe they would be proven, and I think Judaism has the flexibility to evolve with the times. So well, I gave the example of Maimonides. Okay, I'll, I'll be with he, he gives a lot of evidence that rabbis have conceded the Torah has been corrupted, yeah. been abrogated. Um, hadith have been copied. It's, it's the opposite. Well, Tosh, if you can't add to the Torah, you can't. You have to okay, make okay, it. okay. But, but there so is your Muslim who's telling you this is is misrepresenting. No, Judaism. there is physical evidence. No, he know, it's a different thing. It's a different, he's, he's saying this. Jews, Jewish rabbis, believe the Torah has been corrupted, yeah. and that's, that's that's wrong. And if you've got a Muslim account that's telling you this is what Judaism is, no, but he just, cites rabbis. He may, he may be, I can I can misrepresent the Quran. I can say that Islam teaches Muslims to strike the neck of the disbelief. The Torah, the the, the no, Jewish, he's not, he's not like no no the Jewish scriptures themselves tell the Jewish people that the the scriptures have been corrupted. I don't know about that. No, there is there is a direct verse in Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter eight, and Jeremiah. In chapter 8, verse 8, is specifically talking about the scribes of the law. They have corrupted the book. I don't know what Joseph has to say on that. Okay, so, so, so the book itself, the book itself, it's like the Quran. We believe in the Quran and there would be a verse in the Quran saying Quran has been corrupted. Okay, this Quran you guys are reading is corrupted. To the contrary, the Quran tells us this book will never be corrupted. It will be protected. God will protect it himself because it is meant to be for eternity. It will last until the day of judgment. And the Quran to this day stands the test of time. It hasn't been corrupted. On the, on the other hand, we have plenty of evidence on the Torah and the rest of the books of the Jewish scripture. They have been corrupted. They've been changed beyond recognition, right? I don't know what Joseph thinks of this. And, uh, no, wait, could I finish? Because I need to go in it. <laughs> and, and I wonder what Joseph thinks of those prophecies about an Arabian prophet. Okay, being a, being a Jew, I believe Joseph obviously has read those passages. And uh, if those you passages... Talk, and also, one interesting thing is the historian Bernard Lewis concedes that Jew, Jewish theology copies a lot from Islamic theology. Yeah. Believe yeah. True, yeah. 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 Hey, he's a Zionist saying that. No, the language. Hebrew language in its current form oh, yeah, it's very cool. uses the classical Arabic language to explain many things. Like, uh, yes. No, like what? I don't know this. So I'm asking like what? You don't know this. Re Reread the Jews of Islam. It talks about this. So in, you're talking modern Hebrew? I'm talking medieval Hebrew. So medieval the, Hebrew. the Jewish rabbis in Spain use the Arabic language to decipher many uh, terms uh, they could not explain Rashi, in the Hebrew language. Rashi does the same and he uses French. He was based in no problem. No yeah, problem. So, 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 so I, no problem. I have no problem with that. I'm saying. 